Man-made climate change is, according to most scientists, happening now. Leading climate experts also agree that nations have to drastically reduce emissions of greenhouse gases released from fossil fuels and need to stop cutting the forests that absorb carbon dioxide. But the world seems to be moving in the opposite direction. Today in Climate Challenge, the human face of climate change and the pursuit of justice. Children carried away by cyclones, families who've lost everything in the floods, people starving because of the drought. Climate change has many faces. Every continent is affected, but not all have the means to deal with it. The poor are already suffering. The poor are on the verge. We must have climate justice. We must have climate justice as an international community, we must recognize that the polluter must pay, and not the poor and the vulnerable. Geneva, June 2008. Kofi Annan presided over the first global humanitarian forum. At the heart of the debate, the human face of climate change. Africa, South Asia, some parts of Latin America are very prone to uh, weather changes in their fragile communities and whole islands will disappear like the Maldives. They had no responsibility for that. It is a human rights issue. The worst affected uh, from the impacts of climate change would be some of the poorest communities in the world. What have they done to deserve this? Bangladesh, one of the flattest countries in the world. By virtue of its geographic location, Bangladesh is affected by climate change in a number of ways, starting with cyclones which form in the Bay of Bengal and which are becoming more and more violent. It was pitch black when Sidra struck Bangladesh. Masamit Hasina remembers it as if it was yesterday. We were with all the children and I was scared because there was water surrounding us. I had nothing to hold on to. It was night. Many children fell and we had to catch them. Like this child of mine, she was swept away by the current, but the current brought her back. Many people were holding on to the tower over there. They were in distress. They no longer had any clothes on. The people who managed to go to the shelter went with the children. The children were screaming. They had to crawl. They fell. They were half dead. No one was killed in Masamit Hasina's village that night. However, in Kulsum's village, four children died, torn from their parents' arms by the current. Among the victims, Kulsum's grandson. He was 18 months old. <laughs> By morning, we were looking after our relatives. We were crying. Our houses had disappeared, our cattle were dead, and I couldn't find my husband. I was crying, and at 2 p.m. I found my grandson far away in the tall grass of a paddy field. What could we do? We buried him. Atik Rahman is one of the group of intergovernmental experts on climate change, the IPCC. The organization was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for its work in 2007. What the cyclone does is put pressure on the water and keep, makes a wave front, water front. And this water moves with tremendous velocity, washing away everything on the way, killing and taking away humans, animals, trees, plants, houses and everything. Between 3,000 and 10,000 people were killed by Cyclone Sidra in Bangladesh. Cyclone Nargis was responsible for more than 100,000 deaths in Myanmar. However, the two cyclones were of equal force. Musamit, Kulsum and thousands of Bangladeshis only survived Sidra because of the shelters, the sturdy raised buildings designed to withstand both winds and floods, and because of the volunteers who raised the alarm. Budpa Jadip was awarded the Red Cross Volunteer Prize in 2008. Faced with the cyclone and winds of up to 250 kilometers per hour, he felt powerless. 
I was terrified. It was the first time in my 22 years as a volunteer in the Cyclone Preparation Center that I saw an alert increase from stage 4 to 10. I realized I needed to warn more people, so I rented a motorcycle and was alerting people until 2 or 3 at night. The morning after Cedar, my fellow volunteers came to my house and said, let's go, let's see some dead bodies. I told them I did not want to see any dead bodies, I wanted to see living people. Among the dead, I saw some of my relatives. I cried and shouted to them, I came to you right now and I've been warning you for three days. Now you're lying in front of me dead. I didn't want to see you like this. The cyclones are intensified. Cedar has been the largest in terms of strength and width of all the cyclones that we have experienced so far. Now this is consistent with the Intergovernment Panel of Climate Change prediction. Farida and her family were spared their lives, but Sidra destroyed everything they owned. They live just a few meters from the sea. With the rising sea level, they're seeing the salt water slowly seeping onto their land. We have nothing. We have no house, no roof, no door. We're just floating in the sea with our family. There's nothing we can do. We are here, just floating in the sea. We have nothing to say. We don't have any other place to go. We can't go to someone else's property. They wouldn't let us live with them. So I'm just hoping for Allah's help. One of our calculations for one meter sea level rise shows that about uh, one-fifth of the country, 20% of the country, will be inundated. In today's population, about 25 million people will be affected, displaced. You know, they will find, have to find alternative livelihoods, which is going to create enormous challenge in a highly populous country and densely populous country like Bangladesh. The challenge is even greater as centre and north of the country are also prone to flooding. The delta rivers that pass through Bangladesh come from the Himalayas. The melting glaciers mean these rivers already filled by the monsoon rains become even more swollen and flood vast areas. <laughs> Close to the river Brahmaputra in the very north of Bangladesh, Mohammed's village. In 2007, the flood swept away his harvest. We always harvested rice and ate our own rice, but last year, because of the flood, we had to buy rice, which we never did before. It's been terrible for six months. This country has always suffered from natural disasters. The Bangladeshis have learned to live with them, building dikes to contain the floods, shelters in case of cyclones. But climate change is making it more difficult now for Bangladesh to adapt. Once a human group or an ecosystem has either collapsed or displaced or has to move, that's the end of that. You can't adapt anymore. Retreat is not an adaptation strategy. If we continue the way we are, people will move. They will move to the other country and it's going to create tensions and pressures and all that and it affects everybody. I think it's the biggest challenge of our time and age and of my generation and the generation coming after us. There will be migration big time unless we stop climate change. We now head to southern Africa. We're in Malawi. Here, 9 out of 10 people depend on food crops. In the center of the country, Mbotele Mene is a village chief. The rains have flooded all the fields in the vicinity carrying the sweet corn plants into the lake. The loss of the plants also means the village has lost the seeds for future seasons. We tried to plant cassava, where the maize has been washed away. But the cassava has dried because of the sun. Here in Malawi, we have a great problem with food. 
For 10 years, flooding and drought blamed on climate change have been occurring more frequently in Malawi. They last longer and affect larger areas. The droughts of 2001 and 2005 brought famine. I can remember the hunger which was brought by the sun, but I don't know the year. We survived by taking unripe bananas and mixing it with maize husks and making it into flour. Then came a group of Europeans who brought yellow maize. Those are the people who rescued us from eating husks. So we were rescued, but now there is hunger brought by floods. The difference is that long ago the rain was coming in good time and stopping in good time and we were planting lots of maize, beans and sweet potatoes. But nowadays it's different. The rains are stopping earlier. Embertele's observations are